A reading from Book of Lamentations. The Lord has destroyed without mercy all the dwellings of Jacob. In his wrath, he has broken down the strongholds of daughter Judah. He has brought down to the ground in dishonor the kingdom and its rulers. The elders of daughter Zion sit on the ground in silence. They have thrown dust on their heads and put on sackcloth. The young girls of Jerusalem have bowed their heads to the ground. My eyes are spent with weeping, my stomach churns, my bile is poured out on the ground because of the destruction of my people. Because infants and babes faint in the streets of the city, they cry to their mothers, "Where is bread and wine?" As they faint like the wounded in the streets of the city, as their life is poured out on their mother's bosom. What can I say for you? To what compare you, O daughter Jerusalem? To what can I? Liken you that I may comfort you, O virgin daughter Zion, for vast as the sea is your ruin, who can heal you? Your prophets have seen for you false and deceptive visions; they have not exposed your iniquity to restore your fortunes, but have seen oracles for you that are false and misleading. Cry aloud to the Lord, O wall of daughter Zion! Let tears stream down like a torrent day and night. Give yourself no rest, your eyes no respite. Arise, cry out in the night, at the beginning of the watches. Pour out your heart like water before the presence of the Lord. Lift your hands to Him. For the lives of your children. Many Christians worry about the course of the Western civilization. Since the new millennium began, we have been witnessing much of social and regional unrest. Christians cannot also ignore the crisis of morality in Western societies. And when we read the biblical passages like today's first reading, we fear if any impending God's wrath is approaching us. This week we have been reading historical passages from the Old Testament, which describe and lament over the destruction and deportation of the people of Israel. These books were written and edited. As the reflections on the Babylonian exile, the authors and editors of these books were the religious leaders of the Jewish people. Thus, it is understandable they saw their tragedy in light of religion and interpreted their international struggles as God's punishment of Israel's unfaithfulness to Him. Historians, economists, or anthropologists. Would look at this tragedy from different angles. Nevertheless, I think we cannot ignore the truth that the corruption of faith and religion is reflected in the crisis of morality. This crisis of mor- morality is not merely limited to sexuality, as most often understood. Social, economic. And environmental justice are threatened, as greed is not harnessed by sound moral practices. The lives of the unborn, the elderly, and the vulnerable and handicapped are discounted when we forget who gives us life. All these examples of moral digression are very closely related to religious teachings. So often we have to painfully see many Christians publicly act against faith and eventually lead people into demoralization and injustice. 
And when a society or a country is fragmented by immorality and injustice, it is only matter of time to disintegrate inside or to be demolished externally. Today, the Book of Lamentations grieves over the unfaithful prophets of Israel, who let people fall into falsity, unfaithfulness. And moral corruption. I admire many ordained clergy and lay people today who courageously warn people against their unfaithfulness to God. We need to listen to them, and we should also become one of them, because we baptized as His mystical body. All share the duty of the prophetic office of Christ.